regular, regular features. The regular, regular, regular features. The regular, regular, regular features. The regular features of Sean. Hello and welcome to Regular Features. I've got a wine happy on, <laughs> and I don't care who knows it. I'm. I'm not embarrassed. Is anyone else embarrassed? Who's that down there? Steve, please introduce yourself. I'm not down there on the Zoom call. I'm actually adjacent to you on my Zoom screen. You're down there in my estimation, Steve. (laughs) Stop assuming. Hi, I'm Steve. And up up and to your left, who's that? (laughs) (laughs) Well, yes, I am more socialist than Steve, and that's because I'm Joe, socialist scrabbles, man of the people, big old sickle. Lovely. I offered to go back to Steve to let him finish what he was saying before I shouted over him. Well, I like the view from the bottom down here. But I won't. Good night. It's time for regular features. Just one more feature. (laughs) Give it to me. Delicious ice cream. God, I'm sorry, you're recording. From Italy. Regular features. Guys, have you been following the news? Nah, Um, whatever. Tried. Rishi Sunak, Chancellor of the Exchequer, delivered the summer budge. Ooh, our six-year-old Chancellor with his toy pram of budget. And his tight shirts and his little sharp elbows. And his, and his long, long face that could just envelop you. Yeah. You have it <laughs> only on one axis. It wouldn't, be, yeah. it wouldn't envelop you from the sides. <laughs> <It would> just, <laughs> top to bottom, like a crescent moon <laughs> oh. coming down you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rishi delivered uh, another uh, a summer budget. It's um, There used, used to be two big budgets, um, but they just cut it down to one. And the summer budget's a bit of a... An addendum. It's like um, like a party, budget. like a spin-off budget for for yeah. the fans. <laughs> but it's a budget by the pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, where they play like tonight's gonna be a good night, and he's just holding up and the fucking red briefcase and popping. <laughs> Rishi dive bombing while Boris wags his finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was watching Rishi Sunak's uh, big budget with big attention because I am a political. A uh, journalist who works for a financial journal. That's where the word journalist comes from, actually. <laughs> You're picking very weird, aggressive targets today, Steve. <laughs> the summer budget and the word journalist. I don't know. Once I just sort of I get into a mood, I get very pointed. It's difficult when because mm-hmm. we're all still doing this over Zoom. You can't like your your facial reactions are like delayed by a second. And if I say mm-hmm. if I say journal, and then you just stare at, at me dead eyed like a goon, I'm going to say it at you again, <laughs> angrily, yeah. and more pointedly <laughs> until someone tells me. And then me we'll to laugh stop. while you're being angry, <laughs> and then we'll respond horrified when, you, and you won't know what to <laughs> think. Um, well, this was my favourite uh, part of the budget. I actually recorded the whole thing, so I'm just going to hit play on this. It's on BBC iPlayer, um, on BBC Parliament. Uh, so listen along so at home. Along at home. Okay, here it is. <laughs> no problem. Order. I call the Chancellor of the Exchequer to make a statement. Chancellor of the Exchequer. Yeah. And finally, I am launching my last new initiative. It is called Big Coin. It is a really big coin the size of a car, and everybody can take turns owning it. When it is your turn to own the big coin, you will receive a very loud SMS from gov.uk <laughs> with the following message. <laughs> Hello, this is the government. Have you heard about the big coin? <laughs> well, good news, buddy, because now it's time for big coin in your life. Between the hours of 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock tonight, big coin is yours to do with as you please. Here, in a drop-down menu, are the following ways in which you may interact with Bitcoin. A one. What? Sorry, I didn't realise that you were going to go so deep into the Zsa Zsa Gabor for this. A one. Ask Bitcoin for advice. 
Bitcoin is programmed to respond to any query presented to it from oh no, no this, is, this is this is this is gone wrong <laughs> that was not chinese bitcoin is programmed to respond to any query presented to it from domestic matters such as how to get dirt out of a cushion to matters of the heart such as how to marry a man or wave a handkerchief out of the side of a train as it speeds away a speaker embedded in the back of bitcoin will dispense sage wisdom in the voice of your most recently deceased relative. I just think the phrase sage wisdom would have been funnier if you were still doing the Chinese accent. <laughs> yeah, it was not a Chinese <laughs> accent. <laughs> Two, touch big coin. <laughs> is this a way, is this a choose your own adventure? No, this is the second way you can interact with big I choose to <laughs> touch Bitcoin. Touch, touch Embrace. <laughs> you may run your hand along the bumpiest edge of Bitcoin <laughs> under one condition. You must say, thank you for the economy, Bitcoin, when you are finished. <laughs> if you do not say, thank you for the economy, Bitcoin, when you are finished, Bitcoin <laughs> will begin to tremble with sadness at your ingratitude and immediately throw the country into seven Great Depressions. <laughs> Option three. <laughs> I want to grab onto the big coin and roll down a hill like the man off the front of the world in action <laughs> opening credits. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know is a reference to another more famous painting. <laughs> that is what the true beard man was doing. Having a whale of a time. <laughs> Bitcoin. He was in a Zorb. You couldn't see it. It was in 3D. Option number three. Blow a kiss at Bitcoin. Feel free to blow a big kiss at Bitcoin. Where Bitcoin comes from, Bitcoins do not <laughs> blow kisses at one another and do not understand what the gesture implies. But Bitcoin has read a book about kissing and knows that you are being kind to Bitcoin. Bitcoin will like this and boost GDP for the next quarter. Yes. Option number four. Fight Bitcoin. Lately, Bitcoin has been spoiling for a fight. Bitcoin seems angry at the world and isn't able to properly articulate his complicated coin feelings. So it lashes out with big coin violence from time to time. We asked Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty what to do about angry big coin, and he told us that it might be helpful if every now and every then somebody picked a fight with big coin so it can release some of its pent up frustrations and big coin energy. So please feel free to punch and slap big coin as hard as you can. Big coin's just a very big coin, so don't worry about hurting it. <laughs> Option number five, join ISIS. <laughs> this has nothing to do with big coin, but GCHQ asked me if I could put an option in here to help catch anyone who wants to join ISIS. If that is your plan, please write, I want to join ISIS on a piece of paper and then lie face down on the floor with your hands behind your back. A policeman will come out from behind Big Coin to arrest you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I much prefer it if the Big Coin rolled away slowly to reveal the policeman. <laughs> well, also, now I'm imagining that on the other side of Big Coin is a Vitruvian manned policeman rolling at all times. Option number six. Spend big coin. Of course, the very best thing you can do for the British economy is to spend big coin. The problem is, because big coin is much, much too large of a big coin to fit inside normal cash registers, big coin is only accepted in big Sainsbury's. You have big <laughs> slots especially made for spending big coins. If you can roll big coin out of the treasury where we keep big coin, by all means spend it on those things you can only get in big Sainsbury's, such as the good vegan cheese, not the Violife. 
Well, that's it from your old pal Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor of the Exchilanstam. I hope Bitcoin has made you all feel much less horrible about the financial situation and the job securities. And that you all have a pleasant evening with Bitcoin. <laughs> However you decide to spend it. <laughs> <laughs> nice but, smug laugh there, Rishi. <laughs> for those watching at home, Rishi, you were here. <laughs> and for those in the room... Back so soon, Ak? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Goodbye. I yield the floor to Keir Starmer. That's what they say when they're finished, right? <laughs> Fuck you, I yield my time. <laughs> Fuck you, I yield my time. Fuck oh, you. I want a feature now. I don't think I want one of them. I just was astonished at the point late into the feature where you unveiled the fact that there were coins. It wasn't just a big coin. Yeah, suddenly, I thought it was one big coin. Suddenly, I thought it was. Yeah, carry on. I thought it was like in the day to day where they lose the pound and there's yeah. only one <laughs> pound. Yeah. That's, that's definitely was in my head. Shit. Well, no one else is as clever as us. It's fine. Yeah, no one memories things like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there's several big coins. Yeah. Well, big, you, you, you said you, it as if you could spend them. That's true. Yeah, you pluralised it in the very last one. Yeah. Until then, just a coin. Mm, well, they said, yeah, Big Sainsbury's has big slots, especially for mm. big coin. Uh, in a, you in said it, coins. At that point, that was the point. You said coins because that was the point. My brain exploded. I remember it. <laughs> Whoa! It's like the end of the Avengers, where all of the heroes come back at once, except it's coins, coins, coins. It's nine big coins <laughs> rolling down a hill with police attached to their backs. <laughs> Does Big Coin have the Queen on it? That's what I wanted to know earlier. I was thinking queens. Um, I I was imagining it had the queen on the reverse side of big coin. What's on the front side? Uh, the queen, but she's looking straight at you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really good if you did one of those big spins of a coin on a table and it's just the, the queen every so often just be like... <laughs> if, she's, if, you just, if she's looking either way and if you spin it really fast, it looks like the queen is watching a tennis match at you. <laughs> <laughs> but she's, a, she's watching from one end of the court. <laughs> she hasn't even got good seats and it's the queen. <laughs> queen. Real and just hold me. Because my name is Juicy Susan. Uh, not so much a feature this week, boys, as a PSA or a helpful hint, a life hack, a tip. <clears throat> I don't know if you, like me, struggle with the fact that if you strip away all meaning and uh, thought about what's being said and opinions and all of that stuff that Jeremy Clarkson's quite funny when he writes things and is actually sort of a right-wing regular features writer. Have you noticed this? His son column titles often hew very features. Hmm. For instance, So a television documentary tells us animals are clever Try emailing one and see if it manages to reply. <laughs> or it's time to ban the balloons. They're as dangerous as an AK-47 and heroin. <laughs> Is the AK-47 firing heroin? I or don't know. Just, or is it just giving two things on a tray to a baby? <laughs> <laughs> Big silver platter. Which balloons uh, was he railing against? Hot air balloons? I, I, I didn't look. I try not to mm. click them. If today's robots can't even tie shoelaces, then why on earth are we allowing them to drive? <laughs> That's just a Steve feature. <laughs> Don't worry about cancer-free bacon. Just sit back, have a drink, and accept you're going to die. <laughs> are these real Jeremy Clarkson headlines? These are all real Jeremy Clarkson mm. column titles. <laughs> Everything I'm going to read to you today is a real Jeremy Clarkson column element. 
And I think... What did the, the word prob- element do then? The word element there felt like it might be doing some heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's just some bits. Um, <clears throat> but what I've realised, sort of, I've spent quite a lot of this week trying to crack the Werner Herzog voice because someone mentioned it and it really is very fun to sort of just like go a bit hoarse and a little bit German but then when you say things like aliens he goes quite like weirdly strident outside of his usual demeanor so he's like oh the aliens have I got to human degradation it's really fun to just walk around and read things I read the first page of the BFG out in it the other day and he says <laughs> moonbeam which is great I love that you take um, accents for a walk I just don't yeah. walk them around <laughs> that's see and unfortunately the problem I've worked out well what I did was I read a Jeremy Clarkson column in a Werner Herzog accent and I thought <laughs> you know what it distracts you so much that you can get away with reading it without paying attention to what's actually being said but the problem is if you're not good at a Werner Herzog voice sometimes it just sort of you you let the air into the into the room and suddenly you realise you're reading out the words of a bigot. Um, so basically, I thought I'd just do that for a bit. I'm just going to read out some funny Jeremy Clarkson bits and we'll see if we can ignore the fact that he's horrible because of Werner Herzog saying them. <laughs> for instance, over the over the years, <laughs> I've eaten and drunk all sorts of things you won't find on the menu in McDonald's. I've had a tarantula. <laughs> so many- a sparrow, a grasshopper, a frog, a kangaroo, a puffin, a bit of whale with some grated guillemot on it, and I once got hog whimperingly drunk on snake bile vodka. The most revolting thing was a seven day egg. It came in a shell like an egg. And you cooked it. And so did I. (laughs) And you cooked it in the pan of boiling water like an egg. But inside, all jumbled up with the eggy bits, there was an eye and a bit of beak and half a foot and a couple of feathers. It tasted and smelled even worse than it looked. And it looked disgusting. (laughs) The worst thing I ever ate, however, was a bet. They'd put it in quite a good curry, so the taste wasn't so bad. But the bones, it was like I was eating a cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. It's good. See, and you didn't notice. Well, I mean, it's not that horrible. It goes on about coronavirus afterwards because of the bat, but you know. Oh, right. right. Bit out. Hang on. There was a... I am completely lost. That, this is all pure him, yes? This is all Clarkson, baby. It's pure Clarkson. I'll go. JC. I'll go. Um. I'll go slightly more down the Clarkson line. See if this offends you. Australia is God's laboratory, and people were not actually meant to live there. I've suspected for some time God did not want people to live in Australia. He created it as a continent far, far away, where he could house all his experiments that had gone wrong. And to make sure people didn't go there, he put a huge coral reef on the approaches and filled the interior with a sea of sand that goes on forever. He even used this remote outpost to house some of his more ridiculous ideas. Stuff he came up with when he was drunk. Like those birds that can't fly and the otter with a beak. (laughs) (laughs) Then you have the kangaroo which gets about by bouncing, and the koala, which is permanently stoned and clutches chlamydia if anyone even picks it up. (laughs) For millions of years. (laughs) For millions of years, this big sandy cupboard under the stairs went unnoticed. But then along came Captain Cook, and now the world knows all about Oz and its stupid, dangerous creatures. <laughs> Plainly, God is embarrassed because he's decided to set fire to it. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Yeah, no, here we go. That, I mean, here we that, go. That, <laughs> that fixes me because the first one, I didn't remember that. Mm. And I thought this was genuinely a you pretending, but I remember that. Oh, that is a genuine Clarkson, so now I can stop feeling mm. like I'm missing out on a joke. <laughs> he just it, keeps like, he, going. 
Yeah. I mean, he's, as you quite rightly identified at the beginning of the feature, he's a great writer. It's he's so annoying that he's, he's such very a funny. prick because <laughs> he's really good. Like, if he hadn't uh, pivoted at the end of that section to saying, I'm glad Australia's on fire now <laughs> yeah. because of all of that. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, of course, he does carry on. It's been argued that fires raging across the country were caused by global warming or out-of-control Barbies. But when you look at the footage, <laughs> you know something biblical is going on. Those things are huge. <laughs> he's just... I mean, like, that he's putting it down to God at the end. Uh, he's quite impressed. If, he, if he'd said, well, because of what a natural shambles this country is, uh, it's a shame that it's all caught fire because it's got kangaroos that bounce. Yeah. And could he you imagine if go- kangaroos ran on two feet like normal animals? Like men. They'd run like men. They'd kill like men. They'd fuck like men. <laughs> I could bring it up more up to date. Let's see how offended you get by this, snowflakes. Oh, I'm embraced. Britishers are less frightened by the coronavirus than any other people on Earth, according to a new survey. Everywhere else in the world, 95% of people are running around wailing and panic buying levatory paper and torches. (laughs) Here, though, a whopping 44% said they were not very scared. And 26% said they were not scared at all. You've gone Schwarzenegger. I like it. That is entirely unsurprising. <laughs> a few years ago, some mates of mine were on a rugby... He doesn't say mates, does he? Some mates of mine were on a rugby tour of California. <laughs> California. <laughs> California. Whatever. <laughs> when the Rodney King riots erupted right outside the gentlemen's club where they were partying, a harassed looking police officer rushed into the room, turned the music down, asked the young lady to come down from the pole, and adopted a panicked, shouty tone to say, I'm gonna need for everyone to leave the building right now. <laughs> we have an armed situation outside. Hostiles are inbound. And until we can secure the perimeter, dot, dot, dot. At this point, all my friends started throwing bread rolls at him. He therefore stopped shouting and surveyed the room before saying with a shake of the head, I guess you guys are going to be okay. That's the thing about us lot. We always are and we know it. And that's why we are not scared by an invisible worm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, an invisible worm. Oh. Well, back then, I don't you didn't re- know what it was. Some sort of invisible no, worm. Then, some sort of a spectral not- beetle. <laughs> Weirdly, I think that was about a week ago. So <laughs> still calling it a Chinese plague. Still talking about how pangolin steaks were in a bat cave or some shit. Still talking about how it's an invisible worm. <laughs> Clarkson. Oh. I don't know how that's worked. I don't know if that's just made everyone upset. Um, but that's, that was my little experiment into Werner Herzog. The future is rosé because real men drink pink, just like Brad Pitt and me, is another one. <laughs> I still want to try it in Wolfitzer. Real men drink piss. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that's just a No, no, it's supposed to hang on. Real men. Give me a sentence. Hi, I'm say. Wolf Blitzer. Start with I'm Wolf Blitzer. Hi, I'm Wolf Blitzer. Yes. Carry, tell me a line to say. Uh, I mean, I would love to hear you say, over the years I've eaten and drunk all sorts of things you won't find on the menu in McDonald's. <laughs> over the years I have drunk and eaten all sorts of things you wouldn't find on the menu at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Sucking on my peaches like you want and they calling me all the time. I'm running to get my frizzy peaches behind all of the time. Regular features. Regular features. Regular features. Oh! It is, it is, it is time for my regular feature. But, um, I can I just say that a couple of weeks ago, or whenever it was, when you did an, a pre-features thing, which was reading off, um, the... Posts I make for the King Billy website. That was last week. Was it last week? It was last God, week. It like, doesn't doesn't time mean nothing these days. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, so yeah, it was um, heartwarming to feel like part of the podcast while I was there. Yeah, we all follow you on Instagram and Facebook and we were... Uh, enjoying your your social media content that you well, I didn't follow well, him. That was the problem. I say that so I, I did find that Gav had followed my Facebook page today, and uh, Facebook had given me a suggestion that what if he likes this? Why not invite him to like the page? You fucking better believe I did as the most passive aggressive social media <laughs> move I did this week. <laughs> <laughs> but the listening to last week you kind of brought to the forefront of my mind what a war I've drawn between my the King Billy self that is me for my King Billy people <laughs> and the regular features crowd. I think it was something Joe said, like, it's enough to will to chaps dander. And he said, oh, yeah. he said if that was Facebook, he said, it's cold and my cock dropped off. <laughs> and, like, my first thought was, yeah, that is, a, that is the right shift in tone, but also, B, mm-hmm. it's really warm weather. Why did you think I meant it was cold and my cock had shrunk? Because I thought of <laughs> wilting as a thing to do in the cold and a cock. It's just the wilting of a a flower in the extreme heat mm. that hasn't been watered properly. I don't know. Why does your brain go to cock constantly? Because mm. a chap's dander is definitely not a flower. It's a penis, <laughs> and you know you were talking about a penis. I'm just a social media naive. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, um, ever since you broke down those walls, I've been having trouble writing Facebook posts because I've just been writing to the wrong crowd. So <laughs> my my drafts folder, Facebook pages does not have a drafts folder, but I'm going to clear out that drafts folder just for the <laughs> sake of you lot because, fuck me, it's so hard keeping up that social media face when your brain's not... Your brain's all over the place and you've got to sell people things (laughs) and they don't like buying things when you make them feel unhappy or awkward. (laughs) And and literally most of what I do is designed to make either myself or you feel awkward. Anyway, here we go. Number one. So my pub's in Stanton. So here it is. um, Facebook social media voice. What's going on, Snenton? Anyone fancy a drink? Tough shit. I'm all out. Not really, but it might be soon. So don't let that happen by following this link to the King Bully shop. If you think you're fast enough, or maybe you're just horrible. In which case, don't get any beer. I I only want the King Bully's beer to go into nice, affectionate drunks who'll jab me in the nuts with a pool cue and tell me they'd kiss me if it wasn't for this damn virus. Anyway, gotta go now. I've done some horrible things in the toilets over the last few months, and I've gotta go and get at it with the chisel. Bye! <laughs> get at it with the chisel. <laughs> Hashtag chisel life. <laughs> Hashtag reopening. Hashtag chisel the porcelain. Uh, yeah, I didn't send, didn't send that one, obviously. That one felt a bit real. So uh, here's another one. Poop, poop. That's the sound of the police taking a shit. But not in the... Ba- <laughs> but not into the barrels in my cellar, I hope. Because I want to sell that beer to you right now. You're going to be so thrilled about some of this week's beers, you're going to need to cool down your eyeballs by looking at something boring, like a ceramic thimble that you couldn't bring yourself to throw away after your grandmother died. Why not pop your finger into that thimble tonight and think of her? Her kind face, her crooked spine that makes you sit upright in your chair when you think about it. Just a quiet night in with you, that thimble, and some beer from the King Billy. Anyway, I've got to go now. I'm coming out of retirement for one last heist. See you in the funny papers. (laughs) See you in the funny papers. I've never known what that phrase meant. I just remember it from reading, like, fucking Garfield. (laughs) Uh, Here we go. It's another one that I didn't send. What's up, buccarinos? Have I got some hot milk for you to chew out of the plastic udder pipe? That's right. You'll be champignon at the bits to buy some beer from our online shop until there's not mushroom left for some more beer. And because I just made two really quick and thoughtless fungus references that I've almost certainly made a dozen times before in my life, I now feel obliged to think of a new mushroom joke. But before I do that, I've got a very serious question for you. Why do rodents squeak in such high voices? 
I don't, I don't know. Because of mycelium. <laughs> Gotta go. Some barrels just rolled downstairs and I need to dunk them on the lid with a spade. Do barrels have lids? Who gives a shit? Ta-ta, fuck nuts. See you in hell. Open brackets, England. Close brackets. <laughs> uh, I did... I, love, I just flew so suddenly left turn into satire at the end, like... Fucking hell, it's mock the week. <laughs> yeah, I only pivot to satire with an open brackets and end it with a closed brackets. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, anyway, and here's the next one. Hi, I've just been hard pegging 40 kilograms of a really lively porter. But enough of what I got up to last night with a worryingly slender hotel worker. It's time to tell you, twats, what Alkages is for sale so you can get reckless with your next door neighbor over the garden fence. Wait, what's that on my ankle? Oh no, it's the pub ghost dragging me through the floor. If only I had more time to tell you how to li- how delicious today's selection of beers is. If only I had more time in the mortal realm to explain the conditions that apply to this week's coupon code. Thank God this laptop has a very sensitive keyboard because I'm at 50% opacity right now, and I don't think these digits could depress a mechanical device which is not what my sentient accounting AI said to me about my recent sales figures. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I'm dead now. See you tomorrow for more social media fun. (laughs) I like that you've reinvented ghost powers. The ghost touches you and then you become a ghost slowly and get dragged through the floor till dead? Drag me to hell, I think. (laughs) That's cool. Next. Wank. Wank, wank, wank. Wank. Wank, 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 wank. Oh, hi. I was just having a really noisy wank. But if you buy a beer from the King Billy's online shop today, I promise to keep it down while I creep up to your door, still wanking, and drop off a pop (laughs) bottle full of IPA on your doorstep. Just don't open the door or you'll push me over the edge and I'll fall asleep in a puddle of me own making. If that does happen... Be a love and fish me phone out me pocket and put it on charge, as I'll need to do some more social media in the morning. Anyway, got to go now. I've just spunked. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, this is when I did write this all over a really tight half an hour schedule because I just came back from the pub today after building things for my pub. I run a pub. Did you? Do I mention the word pub at all? <laughs> Before I try to sell you any beer today. Sorry. I've got a lot of wind in my neck right now. Before I try to sell you any beer today, quick straw poll. What's the smelliest bit of your body that you can actually touch with your nose? Best answer gets a free pint of stout that I just found. And no sticking a finger up your ass. That's cheating. Anyway, got to go now. A balloon just drifted into the room, and I think it's evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's that Clarkson column. I know. We, today we did balloons was the common theme. <laughs> I'm increasingly thinking Joe's um, a figment of everyone else on the podcast's <laughs> imagination. Uh, and the last one is hello, I'm opening the pub next week. Long shriek. <laughs> that one would work on the, um, on yeah. the feed. If you do live in Nottingham, go to the King Billy pub next week and you won't die. That's a guarantee. Well, you will mm-hmm. you will die eventually. Oh, uh, yeah, but not of pub. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Regular Features Podcast. Thank you for listening. We salute you. If you would like to salute us with money, please go to patreon.com forward slash irregular features. And there you'll find everything you need to know about the journey for your cash to arrive with us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, I fucking loved hearing you get there. We need to write instructions for we need to write instructions for people to give us big coin. Big coin. <laughs> Just access the big coin is all the economic um recompense that we need. Mm. Cuz I have not had enough big coin moments lately. I still think 
the big coins thing was the end of season one finale when season two just has to grapple with the multiplicity of coins. Mm. Mm. Just the shadow of several big coins fall upon the big coin. <laughs> Trundling. <laughs> and Rishi Sunak is like, what? But and then this was the, the shadow chancellor. The shadow chancellor. John McDonnell. John McDonnell had a farm of big coins. <laughs> hey, I'd like to shout out some recent patrons who've helped us out. I would like, because this was so successful last week, <laughs> when we came up with B names for them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. The classic B name episode. Go on. Bring on the B. Give me a B name, Mr. Bell. B Hell? Don't. That's a terrible place to send your bees. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Rose. Bees love to sniff a rose. <laughs> they do love to sniff a rose. Patrick before bros. Bro, <laughs> be rose before the god knows. <laughs> Stefan van Kampen. That is complicated. Sting fan van hive guy. <laughs> there we go. That's what I was looking for, Joe. You got there. <laughs> and Lucci. Buzzwings O Pollen. <laughs> yes. Finally, you get the point of this bit of the podcast. <laughs> Buzzwings O Pollen. An Irish bee. An Irish bee. <laughs> oh, well, um, please go to patreon.com forward slash regular features to help us out if you can. If you can't, just tell your friends, tell your mum, tell mm -hmm. your son, tell your shoes, whisper it into the ground, bury it in a hole, a tree will grow. And when someone eats the fruit of that tree, they will hear the words on the wind. Regular features. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode of the podcast. Goodbye. Good night. Regular features. <laughs>